Good morning. Welcome to another Sunday morning of online worship with Woodmont United Church of Christ. I'm here as always kicking things off with what we call our welcome coffee. It's a chance to gather wherever and whenever we're watching this as we all make our way through the digital doors of our online sanctuary. I'm here at my workstation. I've been working from home about a year now uh, throughout the pandemic and I do a lot of editing work. I field a lot of calls. One of those calls might sound familiar to you every once in a while. My phone rings and I hear, hello, we're calling with the final chance uh, regarding your car's extended warranty. You've probably gotten something similar. Well, the first time I got it, I just deleted it and yet it called back again and again and again and again and, again and so finally I said, how many final chances are these people trying to give me? Well, as annoying as that message may be, it did make me think about God. That no matter how many chances uh, we think we've blown, no matter how many times we think we've screwed up, we are never so far from God's grace that God is not calling out to us again with yet another chance to bring ourselves into a right relationship with God. So later today in the service, we'll be having communion, so get bread or juice or whatever you'd like to use in place of them, and let us give thanks for that grace that we're offered. Also, make sure you stay tuned for the very end of the service. We have a wonderful three-part amen that uh, Bruce has put together with several members of Woodmont UCC, and the sound of their voices combined, my words are not even going to properly describe it, so make sure you stick around and listen, because it is really something to behold. And there are also other chances, if you still want to join and be a part of that three-part amen yourself, send something to Bruce and he'll add you to the, the group. So, you've heard enough from me. Let's go on to Bruce for today's opening praise music. Good morning, everyone. Glory, O oh Creator, for bringing life to earth. Glory to our Savior, for sharing your life and worth. Glory to the Spirit, for guiding our rebirth. Now and forever. Amen. Glory, O oh Creator, for bringing life to earth. Glory to our Savior, for sharing your life and worth. Glory to the Spirit, for guiding our rebirth. Now and forever. Amen. So let us know, let us press on to know the Lord. God's coming for is as certain as the dawn. The Lord will come to us like the rain, like the spring rain watering the earth. Let us know let us press on to know the Lord. God's coming forth is as certain as the dawn. The Lord shall come to us like the rain, like the spring rain watering the earth, like the spring rain watering the earth. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. With thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Pure and 
holy, the tried and true. With thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. For you. Good morning, everyone. A warm, warm welcome to all who are our viewers in fellowship together with us virtually until we can regather after the pandemic is over safely and keeping uh, each other safe and well. A warm welcome to you all who join us for worship each Sunday at 1030 for the premiere. You can also watch the recorded service at other times throughout the week following. Also, you can push a button at the end of the service on your screen that will bring you to our coffee hour, which is a virtual in-person coffee hour where we can meet and greet you. I hope you'll join us there following the service today. My name is Kim Cartwright, the interim pastor at the Woodmont United Church of Christ in Milford. And we love to invite new people into our lives. This service, even though we be socially distanced at this time, is literally a gift from our home to your home. And as someone once wrote, home is where life makes up its mind. And uh, I think of you as my faith friends this morning, our fellowship being a spiritual home for me, and I hope for you as well. Our spiritual home and fellowship with faith friends is truly a home where life makes up its mind about some of the most important things of life. And that's why we're here, to worship God and say thank you for life itself. So let us worship God in spirit and in truth with grateful hearts. Amen. A blessed day this is, with the gift of our lives freshly given. Praise God who has made us. Praise Christ who walks with us. Praise the Spirit that inspires us and guides us. We give thanks for the people with whom we share our lives, for neighbors and friends, for brothers and sisters in Christ, a communion of kindred spirits and shared faith. We see the image of our Creator in each other's lives and hear God's word to love one another. Let us join together in the prayer of invocation. We give thanks, O Holy One, that your Spirit inspires our congregation and is active in the world. Bless and transform our hearts and minds, guiding our thoughts, words, and deeds in the homeward path of your will to be done. Guide us in your mission to have the courage to be faithful disciples, fulfilling your vision in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. I invite us all at this time to come together for our prayer of confession, opening our hearts <clears throat> to confess who we are and opening our hearts to receive <clears throat> the gift of God's grace. And let the Holy Spirit write that forgiveness upon your hearts so that you can write it upon the hearts of others. Amen. Let us pray. Compassionate God, we have done some things that are good, and we have done others that distance ourselves from you and our neighbors. You know the many per perpetual struggles we experience, the struggle between fear and love, resentment and forgiveness, foolishness and wisdom, pride and humility disloyalty and faithfulness, possessiveness and generosity. We are sorry when we fail to measure up to what your call requires, but we have deep gratitude for your gift of grace, repeatedly lifting us when we fall and sending us forward with spirits and faith renewed. We pray in our Savior's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. The good news of the gospel is that God is a forgiving, gracious God.
desiring that we come to know in our lives the blessing of receiving unconditional love. When we listen to God's word from the Bible or from the personal experiences of our faith friends or in our own hearts when meditating or when praying, when we recognize our need and are ready to receive, and when we pray sincerely from our hearts about what we have done that we should not have done and what we should do but have left undone, we are assured that God's forgiving love flows to us in abundance. This also then becomes a call to us to do likewise for others, as the Spirit has written upon your hearts the message of grace and forgiveness. We are asked to be, to be good news of unconditional love to all whom we meet. <clears throat> and so may we accept the call to do likewise for others that the good news of unconditional love may spread. And praise God. Amen. The mission for the month of March here at Woodmont UCC is one great hour of sharing. This is one of the five to five missions sponsored by the United Church of Christ. The theme for this uh, year's uh, funding is Let Love Flow. And there are many uh, places and ways that uh, we can help in that, uh, using that theme. One of the missions that they have uh, supported over the years is farmers in Nicaragua who um, have to deal with political uh, difficulties as well as the ravages of climate change. They off, some of them have trouble make, growing enough food to support their own family let alone to then sell and make an income for their family. Another more uh, state, United States-wide pro program has been uh, to help with the recovery from the very uh, terrible wildfires in the state of California back in 2020. Many, many communities have been just destroyed totally, and churches in the UCC system are trying to step forward to help individuals and families and churches rebuild and recover their lives. Um, Art and I over the years have given to this mission and we've tried to um, think about putting together one hour's either salary or income to give a guideline for how much to give. But of course, you can give any amount, it's, uh, any amount is uh, gladly accepted. Um, you, will you will be hearing more about the other missions that are helped by this one great hour of sharing. But please open your heart, let the love flow, and contribute in support of one great hour of sharing. Thank you. Good morning, Woodmont UCC. Every week this year, during a good trouble moment, we shine a light on racism in this country. Jesus said, I have come into the world as light so that whoever believes in me may not remain in darkness. Good trouble moments will not be easy or comfortable. Looking at things hiding in the dark never is, but we are called by Jesus to shine a light in the darkness in order to overcome it. Thank you for being on this journey with us. You see something that is not right, not fair, yeah. not just yeah. say something, yeah. do something, get in trouble, good trouble, necessary trouble. Good morning, Woodmont UCC. March is Women's History Month and a time to celebrate women's contributions to history, culture, and society, and has been observed annually in the month of March in the United States since 1987. When you consider that we've only been celebrating Women's History Month since the 1980s, it is really a relatively recent celebration. This year, Women's History Month takes on extra significance in 2021 because of the centennial celebrations in 2020 to mark women's suffrage that were curtailed or canceled due to the COVID-19 pandemic. According to a report authored by researchers of the University of Arkansas, when the virus began to take hold, 
the number of women in the workforce began to drop dramatically as they had to assume more responsibility for childcare. Additionally, an article in Forbes reports that the pandemic had a greater impact on women than men, with women experiencing significant increases in domestic violence and rape, higher unemployment rates, greater exposure to the virus due to the numbers of women working on the front lines, a heavier toll on mental health, and more. Not surprisingly, significant strides that open doors for women are risk of being lost. As the pandemic creates an overburdened and often untenable position for working women, many are reconsidering their worth. A 2020 McKinsey study of women in the workforce states that one out of every four women is considering dropping out of the workforce altogether or cutting back. As many as two million women are considering taking a leave from work. Two million. The same study also notes that women are three times more likely to be responsible for most of the household labor. And the availability of outside help that they depended on to get by has evaporated during the pandemic. While there is no denying that women have seen tremendous gains in the fight for societal and economic equality, it is increasingly apparent just how tenuous those strides truly are. Perhaps Women's History Month can provide each of us the opportunity to reflect, reevaluate, and recommit to a society that deeply values all of its citizens and grants every person an equal opportunity and full rights of citizenship inherent in the Constitution. While it's true we may have come a long way, it's also increasingly apparent we have so much further to go. Good morning. My ducks are here to remind us to do our Lenten homework. When we see another, remember they are your sister, my brother, my aunt, my uncle, my grandparent, my child. Love you. Our first scripture this morning is from Jeremiah 31, verses 31 to 34. The days are surely, co surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to one another, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Our second scripture this morning is from 2 Corinthians 3, verses 1 to 3. Are we beginning to commend ourselves again? Surely we do not need, as some do, letters of recommendation to you or from you, do we? You yourselves are our letter, written on our hearts to be known and read by all. And you show that you are a letter of Christ prepared by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. Thus ends the reading of our scriptures. Thanks be to God. Oh, 
Is it in a farmer's field Buried neath the earth Waiting for the soothing rain Waiting for rebirth Oh, where The title of today's message I'd like to share with you is Written Upon Our Hearts, Your Hearts, My Heart. It comes from the Old Testament idea of the prophet Jeremiah, who wrote to the people of his times that there was something new about to happen in their view of how God communicates and works with people. He spoke about God's word being written upon the human heart, now, Jesus in the New Testament really lives that word, that message, in his own life. You'll see. During the years Pat and I were raising our four kids, there were times, surprise, surprise, when one or more of them would misbehave, disobey, or wander too close to something that was not safe for them. And Pat and I would have to make up some new rules to keep a family in line, sometimes posting these on our refrigerator door, as many people do. You know, refrigerators plastered with magnetic messages. We'd give uh, gold stars when they were obedient, and we give unhappy consequences that parents are so good at dreaming up when our kids disobeyed or broke the rules. There were times when we simply had to lay down the law about important things that affected our whole family and expect our children to trust us, trust our wisdom, our experience, our love, and to accept our authority to do this for their benefit and for ours as well. You could call it the Cartwright Family Ten Commandments, only we had more or less of ten back then. The prophet Jeremiah, in Jeremiah 31, verse 32, refers to the famous Ten Commandments given to the people of Israel by Moses. As God's gift to God's people, Moses brought down these commandments from the top of the mountain. And these commandments, he explained, were to bless them and to provide for their well-being. Prophet Jeremiah speaks God's message with these words, quote, The covenant which I gave you, or I made, rather, when I took these people by the hand and led them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant, and then it says, which they broke. Yes, as I recall, the Cartwright family commandments were broken now and then as well. The Ten Commandments of the Old Testament were a set of moral, ethical laws regulating the health and prosperity of the people's growing sense of being a people in community and a society under God and maintaining in good standing the people's relationship with the giver of those laws who they knew to be God. That's what the that's what the Cartwright family rules were for, too. But our kids weren't always happy when a new family rule was imposed that restricted someone from doing whatever he or she wanted to do. <clears throat> all in all, our kids did pretty well over the years with our family rules. But there were also plenty of exceptions along the way where the temptation to break a rule was just a little more than one could bear 
where being perfectly obedient all the time was more perfect than any real person, person should expect. The rules held up the ideal, but in practice we were all less than ideally perfect. Sound familiar? We had to get through sometimes of a tearful face, a pouting in the corner, a stomping off to the bedroom, an angry word, that lo those looks of disappointment and resentment, and sometimes words of frustration like, Mom, Dad, you just don't understand. It is sometimes hard to follow rules, even when they're good, and right ones when one's heart isn't in it. When your heart is focused on something you'd rather do or be. <clears throat> Some consider the passage read today from the book of Jeremiah to express the most important single teaching of Jeremiah. It's considered to be one of the mountain, mountain peaks of the Old Testament, and it came to have great importance in the New Testament and continues to be central to our faith today. The Ten Commandments, Thou shalt not worship other gods than the one and only, Thou shalt not kill, Thou shalt not steal, and all of the other laws that were derived from the original ten, gave the ancient Hebrew people and their descendants, and now to us, a moral standard consistent with living out the will of God. While at the same time they were too high and too perfect an expectation for anyone to fully achieve, yet when those moral laws were ignored and disobeyed or otherwise treated with disrespect, suffering was often the consequence, the deterioration of health and character and stamina and even national security and the weakening of our society. If life with God was simply a set of rules and a set of rewards and punishments, where would we be? If the Cartwright family were simply based upon a set of rules and set of rewards and punishments, where would we have been? The missing ingredient being, of course, love. The stunning insight announced by Jeremiah was that God is not merely a lawgiver, not simply a God of rewards and punishments, but also a God whose heart is love. A love that is merciful and gracious and forgiving, not unlike what we need in all of our relationships if they are to prosper. Well, the good news is that it just so happens that God, the maker of the universe and the creator and sustainer of you and me, have established just such a covenantal relationship with you and me. Jeremiah announced that God would do and was already beginning to do something new. And in addition to what his people had previously understood of their relationship with God. Just as the Cartwright, <clears throat> just as the Cartwright family rules didn't produce a family of perfect obedience, threatening rewards and punishments, Jeremiah was inspired way ahead of his time to recognize the error of thinking that anyone could ever, no matter how hard one tried, could ever achieve perfect obedience to the commandments and expectations of God. There needed to be something more in the family of God, and God was indeed revealing it to us, namely God's mercy, God's forgiveness, which are all various forms that love takes according to what is needed at the moment. Unfailing love. <clears throat> Instead, God was beginning to do something new. At least people were being asked to see something new. 
in relationship to people and to keep the relationship of God and people together. God was not throwing out the commandments, but God was adding, adding in God's grace of a forgiving love. Rather than the Ten Commandments existing only on a chiseled piece of stone tablet and fastened on something like a refrigerator door to contribute to our feelings of pride when we succeed and our feelings of guilt when we fail, Jeremiah writes that God is saying to us, and certainly very clear in the life of Jesus in the New Testament, is saying, I will put my law within people, not out there on a, a tablet of stone, but within people, and I will write it upon their hearts. You won't be able to get rid of it. It's written on your heart. Well, how does God choose to do that? How does God get through to your heart, my heart? Well, in somewhat the same way that we tried to get through to the hearts of our children, even when they broke the rules and disobeyed the family commandments and weren't sure just how much they had hurt or offended us. We just kept loving them. We just kept finding ways, creating ways, discovering ways to let them know that they would always, that we would always keep loving them, forgiving them, which in fact is one form of love and would never be driven away by anything they could do or did not do. God's covenant with us is what we celebrate at the communion table, which we will be doing today, at the Lord's Supper, where Jesus says, <clears throat> this cup is the new covenant in my blood. We all know in our heart of hearts that we have fallen short of fulfilling God's ideal for us, God's commandments for us, God's expectations and hopes for us. But when we come to the table of our Lord, we find him waiting for us, wanting us to come to that table. It is much like Jesus' parable of the prodigal son all over again and again and again. It so often applies to our life together. As a result of his self-will in that parable, here is the son who, who finds uh, having squandered his will and his father's inheritance, he finds that his own life is turning against him and the consequences are negative. In loneliness and hunger, he comes home to his father, asking only to be taken back as a hired servant knowing that legalistically speaking, he doesn't even desire or deserve that. Had his father accepted this idea of the son, it would have been like the old covenant of the Old Testament, where you get what you deserve, a cheek for a cheek, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. You get what you deserve. <clears throat> but the father in this parable would not have the old covenant in which doing right is mere obedience to commands in exchange for food and shelter. Instead, the father's response to the returning son is the response of one who is celebrating a new way, a new covenant, a way, a way of relating by running down the path and throwing his arms open and around his returning son and taking him into the family home with all of the privileges of being a son and a member of a family. And in return, he only seeks the son to be trusting and loving and thankful. That's the message at the table of our Lord today. The broken bread and the cup of wine poured out for you and for me is Jesus celebrating in his own personal life. God's new covenant of grace and forgiveness and offering that gift to us. God's free and gracious gift and offer of fellowship with us and then a call into God's service. And out of eternal gratitude for God's gift of love to you and me, 
May we renew our dedication to having our lives together and everywhere we go being become expressions of God's word and grace that is written, written by God's spirit upon our hearts by faith and if you are willing to let it happen today as we receive the sacraments of Christ's presence at communion, if you are willing, pray for God's spirit to write God's love and grace upon and within your hearts. Amen. Before I offer a pastoral prayer, let us spend a few quiet moments in meditation to name in our hearts those for whom we would lift up prayers today. Let us pause now for those quiet moments. Almighty and gracious God, we pray a light for loved ones and friends and strangers who suffer illness, loneliness, financial stress or depression, isolation or personal loss, the passing of loved ones, the hurts of prejudice and discrimination, emotional and physical injuries, political violence, or other forms of hate crime or rejection. The list sometimes seems overwhelming in the wake of our present pandemic and the severe social and political unrest. Dear God, we pray that you will show us light upon our path, shining upon those needs that we have just named, and many more that we continue to name in our hearts. We need your help and the help of one another, seeking and knowing wisdom beyond just our own. And so we pray your Spirit to reveal to us what we can do and who we can be, how and where we can do things to help our land and our world to heal. We pray for all who live in our country and in the wider world that we might all learn to live and work together in relationships that prosper your precious and gracious gift of life and relationships that convey your love to everyone. In following your light, oh dear God, may we become peacemakers and learn how to do that tireless in a mission and purpose of letting your light so shine through our lives, through our words and deeds, that all people will see hope and promise for all you have created and are creating. In our own lives and as a faithful church, may our life together and our resources bear witness, faithful witness, to your presence and your light revealing and challenging and correcting unjust practices in the world, letting your light shine expressively of your Spirit's love and grace. As one of your saints of old once prayed, we pray also, Lord, make us instruments of your peace. In Jesus Christ's holy name, we offer this our prayer. Amen. As we gather for fellowship at the Lord's table, let us remember that it is the Lord who invites his disciples to gather together. When we sit at this table, we are saying we want to be among those disciples. This table is open to all who confess Jesus as the Christ and seek to follow in Christ's way. Come to this sacred table, not because you must, but because you may. Come not because you are fulfilled, but because of your emptiness, you stand in need of God's mercy and God's assurance. 
come not to express an opinion, but rather to seek a presence and to pray for the Spirit to be with us at this occasion. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them, them to, to the, the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, right to, to give, give our, our thanks, thanks and, and praise. It is right that we should offer thanks, O God, because you have created the heavens and the earth. We give you thanks for all the gifts of creation, for the gift of life itself. We thank you for all that sustains life and for all people of faith in every generation who have given themselves to your will, especially for Jesus, whom you have sent from your own being to be our Savior. We praise you for Christ's birth, his life, his teachings, and for the profound meaning of his death and resurrection and for his being with us now, calling forth your church by the power and inspiration of your Holy Spirit to engage this world with your word and message. Gifted and uplifted by your presence with us, we praise you with the faithful of every time and every place, joining with choirs of angels and the whole of creation in this eternal hymn. Holy, 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 holy creator God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in your name. Hosanna in the highest. We offer you thanks, O Creator, Savior, Giver of life, and we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Consecrate, therefore, by your Holy Spirit these gifts of bread and cup, that they may be for us communion with our Lord. We recall Jesus' words to his disciples on the night of his betrayal, for as they were eating together, Jesus took bread. He blessed it, broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, This is my body which is broken and broken for you and for many. Feed upon this by faith and with thanksgiving, and do so in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after they had eaten. He said, this is the cup of the New Testament, New Testament in my blood shed for you and for many unto the forgiveness of your sins. Take as often as you drink from this cup in remembrance of me. Let us join together in the Lord's Prayer that he taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who Lord art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And, and forgive, forgive us our trespasses, our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Partaking of this bread and this cup, we proclaim Christ's death, we celebrate Christ's resurrection, and we look toward that time when Christ comes again. The bread of life, broken for you and for me, the body of Christ. Feed upon this by faith and with thanksgiving. and the cup of our salvation. Drink of this cup in remembrance of Jesus, our Lord, our Savior. Please 
please join with me in the prayer of thanksgiving. Bountiful oh, God, God, we give you thanks that you have refreshed us at your table by granting us the presence of Jesus Christ. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and send us forth into the world bearing gifts of courage and peace, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Coming to announcements now, if you'd like to be part of our digital choir, as I said earlier, uh, you'll hear them at the very end in our three-part Amen. It sounds fantastic, and if you'd like to be a part, just email Bruce at bruce at barrettoutdoor.com. His email is down below in the description to the video, so just look it up, shoot him an email, and Bruce will send you instructions on what you need to do to be a part of that. So if you're interested, if you're thinking about it, give it a try and shoot him an email. Now, photos and videos that have come in, as I always say, if you'd like to share some memories, some things that have uh, happened to you recently, some moments you want to celebrate, or just something cool that you've come across, you can email me at robsdeli at yahoo.com, and I will put it in the Woodmont Weekly, our weekly online newsletter, and also right here in the service. So here's three photos that came in this past week. This first one is from Art Yost. It's uh, some crosses at Booth Memorial Park and a perfect image as we uh, make our way closer and closer to Easter. Also from Reverend Art, uh, we have this backyard visitor who, uh, who came to see him and lovely colors there. And from Carol Topitzer, this photo is signs of spring appearing at our church. So as the snow melts away more and more, we're definitely seeing uh, the flowers and new life spring forth. So another great Easter message for all of us. If you're looking to give to the church, you can do so by writing out a check to Woodmont United Church of Christ and mailing it to 1000 New Haven Avenue, Milford, Connecticut, 06460. If this is for the mission for the month, just in the memo line, make sure you write missions or you put what the mission is, which is one great hour of sharing this month. So um, you can also hop online by going to woodmontucc.org, clicking on the giving tab and paying safely and securely through PayPal. And uh, just like with a check, you can pick if this is for a general pledge or if this is for missions. And last, if you are in need of any kind of assistance, whether it's financial assistance, help with supplies, or help of any other kind, please don't be afraid to reach out to us and let us know. We have the Deacons Fund for members, we have the Pastor's Discretionary Fund for non-members, and we have the Care Coordinator for supplies and other assistance. All these things are here to help you when trouble arises, when life's unforeseen circumstances arise. So anything we can do to help, we're there for you. So please look down below in the description of the video for information on how to reach out for any of those things. And now let's go on to Bruce for today's Hymn of the Day. Stay with us till 
Part our fellowship here online, we will pray for one another. Let us do that. Be sure to do that. During this Lenten season of traveling together, traveling together in a walk we have with God through Jesus Christ, God has given us each a mind to think with and hands to work with and a heart with the courage to do what love requires. May all of these things come into service of God this week. Take this good news with you into the world, that the world may be blessed with Jesus' way of life through you. If you have received the blessing of worship at worship today, take that blessing and bless the world around you with it. There are countless opportunities to do that every day, Pray to God for your eyes to be open to see them and your will to do them. And go forth knowing that life is never lived by yourself, but rather knowing by faith the fellowship you have with faith friends and also, and more so, the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of God's Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen, 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 my soul. 